Welcome back to week five of a six part series from Surviving to Thriving, where we journey with you, sharing our tools, knowledge and techniques in the hopes of serving you during this pandemic. In the first three weeks, we looked at self. We looked at introspection. And then last week, we took a look on either side of us and looked at community and being other centered. This week, we're going to have a look ahead and above. If all we ever do is look at self or look on either side of us, we'll lose sight of what's happening ahead. We'll lose sight of our purpose and our goal. In order to model something greater, we actually need to know what greater means and what it looks like. To be a model Christian, not only do we have to look at Christ's life on earth, but we also need to grow in relationship with him. To model authentic love, we need to know the maker of love. And to know the truth about who we are, we have to come to learn the truth about who God is and who he made us to be, given that he made us in his image and likeness. Prayer is not just a set of words that we recite. It's a real relationship that we have with God. Our entire lives are meant to be prayer. But that doesn't mean that we're expected to walk around every hour of every day reciting words after words after words. Forget it, I'll lose my voice. Those structured prayers that we use are fantastic tools, but they're not meant to be empty actions. Prayer is about uniting ourselves with God in everything we say, do, think and feel. That's the goal. This is what St. Paul talks about when he says, pray without ceasing. Now there are a few different forms of prayer. The first is worship. And adoration. This is where we give praise and glory, acknowledging our dependence on him. And we enter into this by making an act of faith, trust and humility. You'll need to find your own personal way that helps you enter into worship and ask him to help you figure that out. For me personally, it's a string of four phrases that I use repetitively. I love you. I trust you. I believe in you. And I thank you. Basically what it means for me is I love you wholeheartedly. I trust you with all that I have and all that I am. I believe in you, Father, creator of all things visible and invisible, and I thank you for everything. These four phrases tend to be what I use to enter into prayer and enter into adoration. They also tend to be the four last phrases I use prior to leaving the adoration chapel, remembering that our whole lives are meant to be prayer. So as I leave the Adoration Chapel, I try to walk into the world in prayer. Not that it lasts all that long before I fall out of it. I mean, I'm a work in progress, but what matters is that we strive. Another form of prayer is thanksgiving. This is having gratitude and expressing gratitude for all that we have been given. Whether we can see the good in it or whether we can't right now, knowing that everything God does for us and even the things he holds back from us is only for the betterment of us. It's only for our good. This is about being grateful for that kind of love that he continues to shower upon us. Now, for me personally, I find Thanksgiving much easier through creation than through seeing what he's doing interiorly in me. That's just me. And so what I can see and what I can touch and experience through my senses, I find it much easier to give thanks to him for those things. It's why I love the way he paints the sky first thing in the morning with the sunrise and the way birds sing and laugh. I find all the different aspects of creation fascinating and incredible and I find it much easier to give thanks through that. A third form of prayer is petition and intercession. This is where we request something of God, either for ourselves or for someone else. Now, again, for me personally, I love being able to pray for other people. And I will request all sorts of things in my personal life as well. But I always try to end every prayer with, Thy will be done. Knowing that not only will He give us what we need, but His level of love is so unbelievably out of this world that he will give us the absolute best for us. Not just what's okay and what's gonna get us by, but the absolute best. All we have to do is ask him and trust that his will be done. And on that, you will have noticed that at the end of every video, we say things like, know of our love and prayers, or our love and prayers are short. And we mean that. Here at Virtue Ministry, we pray for every person who comes in contact with God's message through our content. And we love doing that. We consider it a privilege to be able to pray for you. So we've talked about different forms of prayer. Now let's have a look at different ways of praying a bit more practically. 
This is for people who are alone as well as when you're in community. The first one is silence. And we've talked about this in a number of our videos already. It's accepting and embracing those opportunities for stillness and peace to be able to grow so that we can get to a point of solitude where we're united with God in prayer, being able to place ourselves in our Father's gaze. Then there's being attentive. Unlike some modern meditations where their goal is actually to get us to a place of being detached and empty from everything, the Christian way of meditating is actually to unite ourselves with God. And so silence and stillness is the path to be able to help us get there, but we also need to be attentive to God's work in us, to the way grace is moving in us, inspiring us, and so on. That's how we're going to get to a place of solitude. And so sometimes that means removing the distractions that are around us, and other times it just means we need to zip it. I once heard a gem of a man say, God has the most excellent manners. He will not speak over the top of you. In last week's extended video, we looked at love languages. And in this week's extended video, we're going to go into ways of loving God through our love languages. Now, God doesn't need our love in any shape or form, but he does desire it. And he desires it purely because it is better for us. It is good for us to love him. The environment that you surround yourself in will either help you or hinder you in entering into prayer. So create a space that helps you easily enter into prayer. Utilize your senses in prayer. Things like being able to see beautiful images and icons, lighting a candle or an incense, using meditative words and rosary beads. Use your senses to help you enter into prayer. Remembering that prayer is not just something that our soul does, we have a body, mind and soul. And so in a world that tries to tell us that those three things are separate, practice bringing those three things together as we enter into prayer and it will become easier over time. Another way is to marvel, gaze upon the creation around you and what does creation have to say about its maker? Here's three questions I would ask to help with reflection. The first is, if God is himself, truth, beauty, and goodness, where can you see and experience that in the world around you? The second is, where can you see that in the people around you? And the third, where can you see that in yourself? Another way is contemplation. And here we need to be attentive, attentive to what God is saying to us and stirring within us. This is where we can use scripture passages to help us reflect upon the truth of what God is revealing about himself, about who he is, how he loves us, and what he wants from us. In this week's extended video, we'll actually go through a structured Bible meditation process that we can use. And another way of prayer, which is probably the more popular way in our current culture, is through music. There's a plethora of music options available from artists to playlists on all sorts of online platforms. If you're particular about your music, create your own playlist. We've created one at Virtue Ministry that we use as a couple of hours of mostly upbeat type of Christian songs. And I'll put the link in the description box so that you can have a listen to. If you prefer something more classical, there are plenty of options for Gregorian chants on various online mediums as well. If you're musically inclined, why not put some of those structured prayers into melody for your own personal use? But also there are options out there available for some structured prayers, things like the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father, the Rosary and Chaplet of Divine Mercy. We're now looking above and in growing in deeper relationship with God our Father, we can come to know who we are as his children, who we're uniquely called to be, our purpose, and how we bring God glory through that. We need to look ahead, beyond, and above to God so that we can run this race of life and thrive during this pandemic or any of life's challenges. Remembering what Jesus taught us, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Loving ourselves means caring for and resetting our body and our mind to realign with our soul. Loving our neighbor means growing in virtue, especially in the way that we relate to each other, regardless of what our community looks like right now. And of course, to love God, we pray. We pray and ask him to turn our entire lives into prayer, a prayer of love for him, which is but a reflection of his love for us. 
Thank you for watching this week's video. Do let us know what your thoughts were and your feedback in the comment section below. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on next week's video, which will be the last video in this video series. Until next time, know of our ongoing love and prayers for you all.